This is the Speak for Yourself app, and this is version 1.3, and we're very, very excited because version 1.3 has the ability to search for words within the app. So if you look right up here next to the edit button, there's this little magnifying glass. So if you're looking for a word, what you can do is you can actually touch that, and it says right in here, help me find a word. What this window actually does is it pulls up all of the app vocabulary. So any word that is programmed, including words that you yourself have programmed along with the pictures or symbols that you've used, will be pulled up in here. So if I wanted to find the word hot, I would type in hot and it pulls up anything that starts with H-O-T. So I'm going to just touch hot here. And if you look, it's blinking right around feel. So you touch that. And then it's blinking on the secondary hot. screen around hot. So it shows you the navigation to get to the hot. word hot. It's a very multi-sensory approach because you have the visual um, prompt of the blinking. And then, of course, you have the tactile. In order for it to go to that secondary screen, you have to touch that blinking box and um, and then of course you have to touch the word on the secondary screen to get the auditory output. So that is the way it works when everything's open. Now if you were just starting and you had a more basic vocabulary, if you notice I had, there you go. So say we were just starting with um, a basic vocabulary here and we wanted to find the word play. Let's do that. You would pull this up. And here you have the word play. And what it's going to do is it's going to open the button here. And then it'll open play play on the secondary screen if it's linked. Now if you're looking for a word that is not linked to a secondary screen, so say more, it'll open the, it'll open the word up here. More. And then when you touch it, it'll just speak it. So um, the linking that's something, it, it will only link it if there's something on the secondary screen that you search for. So it's not going to change that, but it will open vocabulary that you need to, um, that you need to be able to say. And if you notice when we had, we were looking under Babel, I mean, I'm sorry, when we were searching for the word um, hot under Babel, it left that open as well. So now you have hot and cold still under here. So if you're searching for a word and you're in Babel and it opens, you're not going to have to worry about going back in and, you know, when you turn Babel off and saying, okay, well, where's that? You know, I, I had searched for hot and we found it. Now let's go find it again. It's going to keep that open for you. Okay. Um, and the other thing, I'm just going to search in here just to show you how it pulls up the picture. So I'm going to search for Emma. And you see Emma's picture right here, which is going to be good. Our hope is that the people who are using AAC, who are actually the users of the, the app, um, are going to be able to do this themselves, at, even if they just have the emerging literacy skills, because they're going to have the picture prompt here. So if they know that a classmate's name starts with the letter E, for example, they're going to be able to pull that up and see their classmates picture. So now you have here and here and it shows the, Emma. shows you how to say Emma. The other thing that we did is you may remember uh, that um, the Speak for Yourself app does not allow duplicate words. So if you want to say add the word candy in here, so I'm going to do this and this is all the same. And this is that duplicate word. The word candy can be found by touching with on the home screen. Now you could touch OK and then that box is just going to go away. But instead of you having to go and look at the main screen and try to figure out where the word with is, you could touch right here and say find it. And what it's going to do is open it and then open candy to show candy. you where it is. Just like always, if you didn't want candy to be there, you could go in and you can delete it and put it where you're going to teach it to the child. And this can, you can close anything that gets open, of course, that open and close, everything else still works the same way that it always has. And um, the other thing that we did, let me just turn Babel back on here with this, is if you look up in that top right-hand corner where all these programming keys are, 
um, we had gotten feedback that they were too close together and that the adults that were trying to do programming were mishitting the buttons, so we spaced those a, a little bit further apart. If there's anything that you um, think when you're using the Speak for Yourself app, if you think, oh, I wish it did this, or it would be really great you know, if, if it didn't do this, um, if there's anything that you are noticing um, and, and you would like to see changed, by all means, please email us. We'd love to hear from you. And we just really want it to be a great tool and a great help to people who are not able to communicate. So if you, um, if, if there's anything that we can do to, to help with that, um, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for your time, and we would love your feedback. Take care.